Good morning, church. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We are glad that you are here. Please prepare your hearts to praise God and receive his word. Welcome, church family. Welcome to this first Sunday of Advent. Hope you all are as excited as God is about his kid coming into the world. <laughs> Glenda and I want to once again thank you all for all your prayers and your thoughts and, and your physical manifestations of blessing. So thank you for that. We're, we're grateful for that. As you can tell, when, when very early in the service, we're going to get to celebrate today. So uh, get your, get your celebra celebration on. The, uh, we're having the, uh, come on, Bethany, help me out here. Christmas gift shop today at two to four. So please, uh, come and support that. And that's, you know, a good, a good way to also begin this season of Advent. Are there any other announcements we need to make today? I'm not going to boot stomp the Hondo thing. I, I hate to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Steve a bad time for scheduling a, if you don't know, now that we're part of Global, we are much closer knit as far as the hierarchy of the Global Methodist Church. So we are part of a covenant group of eight churches, and today we're, you know, in order to start to build that cohesion to make it into a real group, we're meeting in Hondo at first, at formerly First Hondo the, uh, at three o'clock, but... If you go to that, you can't be at the gift thing. So uh, I am going, so you won't see me. Um, I'm not that I don't want to support things going here, but one of several earthly bosses, one sitting in the front row here, but Steve is my other one. Um, so I will be there. But, it, but we do, I'm glad that w as global, we're trying to really make Methodism connectional, that it's not just this congregation that we see ourselves as a Methodist family, and we're doing things together. So today that starts at 3 o'clock at uh, Hondo Methodist Church. I see a hand up there.
Okay. Other announcements? Hearing, seeing none? See, that's the nice thing about Methodism. We don't raise our hands too much in church, so when I see a raised hand, I know it's an announcement and not a give glory to God. So, okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and have the invocation. Lord, we invite you here. We know you are here. Your word promises us where two or three gather in your name, you're there too. But we have turned aside from all the other concerns and taskings of our busy lives to be here in your house. It's that important to us, Lord. We make this presence in your house with intention. May it be a sweet fragrance to you, O Lord. May it bring a smile to your face as we gather as your children at your feet until you gather us, Lord, on that final day when we will hear the trumpet and you do away with this world of war and sorrow and bring us to a place that has no tears. We worship you, Lord. In your mighty name we pray, Jesus. Amen. And now, if Miss Ariana and Miss Elizabeth and the sponsors would come forward at this time. Just, a, a, I'll use this as a teaching moment for the congregation. Some of y'all are, are escaped Baptists here, so let me explain how we get the authority to baptize children. In Acts 16, the Philippian jailer has an encounter with the Holy Ghost and with God, and he accepts Christ. And he and all his family, he decides for his family, and they accept Christ. And God recognizes that decision. Today, Elizabeth is going to be baptized into, Ar <laughs> into Ariana's faith. That was good. <laughs> um, and, of course, in this church, we have a confirmation process. And so the, the, the full circle of Ariana making her, uh, Ariana, of Elizabeth making her own decision for Christ will come during her confirmation. But for day, today, Ariana has that God-given right as a parent to decide to have her child baptized. Bap this is baptism, not, uh, not dedication. Not that God shows up. And so Elizabeth will have the benefit of baptism today. You know, the Bible tells us that when she is baptized, she goes into the grave with Christ and she comes out of the grave with Christ. And Adam's sin is washed away off Elizabeth right now. So she has free will. It is restored to her through baptism today. And that's why we baptize our children, to give them that advantage of setting them free from Adam's sin as early as possible so that she has free will. And that is granted today through this sacrament of baptism. And so now I'll ask you as parent and sponsor, and you're going to be the example for young Miss Elizabeth, do you renounce the devil and all his works and reject the evil powers of this world? Do you repent of your sin and turn to Jesus Christ and confess him as your Lord and Savior? Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? You're supposed to answer too. Yes, okay. <laughs> don't, don't worry, people in TV land were wondering. <laughs> Do you accept the responsibility to resist evil, injustice, and oppression by grace and power of God? And will you obediently keep God, God's holy will and commandments and walk in them all the days of your life by the grace and power of God? And then the most important question of all, will you nurture Elizabeth in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself and profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life? Will you do this? Okay. In that case, it is time to baptize. I see that look of misgiving. <laughs> Elizabeth Kaylane Sanchez, Sanchez, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the Holy Spirit to the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congregation, you now have a pledge. Go ahead and stand. 
Miss Elizabeth, they're making this pledge to you. So we say together, we welcome you and receive you into the fellowship of the church. We promise to surround you in a community of love and forgiveness as you grow in Christ so that you may confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in the royal priesthood of all his people to the glory of his name. Amen. Welcome, Miss Elizabeth. I know you already feel here at home. You know the halls. Let's go ahead and applaud. And, and this is yours, Miss Elizabeth. Your mom will keep it for you. Hey, the girl likes bling. Okay, thank you. You may be seated. season of Advent, we remember that Christ is coming to bring us hope. For those of us bound by bitterness and anger, Christ is coming to bring us hope. For those of us feeling trapped and misunderstood, Christ is coming to bring us hope. For those of us burdened with ceaselessness worry, Christ is coming to bring us hope. For those of us whose lives feel out of control, In this season of Advent, as we look forward to Christmas, we take time to celebrate and to remember. On this, the first Sunday, as we light the first candle, we celebrate hope. Hope for a better world and a better tomorrow. We also remember that we are God's instruments of hope here on earth, and it's up to us to spread the message of hope.
most merciful God, we thank you for the hope that shines like a star in the night. With your promise, we can look forward to a better tomorrow. Fill our hearts with the love that hope brings to all humankind during times of darkness. In your name, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. If you are able, please let's stand to sing hymn 219, What Child Is This? Let's affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Would the ushers please come forward? Mm -hmm. 
Good catch, yeah. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, history repeats itself. As the kings brought gifts to the baby Jesus, we now bring gifts into the house to celebrate his entry as a baby into humanity. Lord, receive these gifts, and may they go forth from this house to glorify the name of the King of kings, the Lord of lords, our Jesus. We ask this in his mighty name. Amen.
Please be seated. Now it's the young disciples' turn. What's up, guys? If y'all don't know me, my name is Travis, and normally I work with our teenagers, but this morning I get to talk to you guys. So, um, today I want to talk about the word hope. They just talked about it when they lit the candle, but I want to know, when you guys hear the word hope, what do you think of? No, you don't want to answer. You're scared. Everyone's listening to you. Well, I'll give you I'll give you an idea. So I think a lot of people, when they hear the word hope, um, they think about optimism, which is a big word. Um, but a lot of times people will think of hope, and they just have this kind of general idea that things are going to be good and that life is going to work out. And that all of their circumstances and the things around them are going to go good, right? But that's not always how life works, is it, right? We see bad things happen sometimes. Has anyone ever had bad things happen, right? And so we can't really hope in the things around us to always be good. But I have some good news for you guys because in the Bible... Our hope isn't based on the things around us, but it's actually based on a person. Do you guys think you know who that person might be? Jesus. That's always the right answer. Um, so do you guys want to learn a funny word? Okay. So the Bible wasn't written in English. It was written in a language called Hebrew, and so I'm going to teach you guys a Hebrew word, okay? But I need you guys to practice the sound with me first. So I need everyone to go, <sighs> can you do that? <sighs> that sound pops up a lot in Hebrew. So this word I want to tell you is called yichal. Can you say that? Yichal? Yichal? Let's see. All right, Rowan, you want to say it in the microphone for everyone? Okay, that's fine. Cool. So, yachal in the Bible is a word that we use for hope in English. And what it literally means is to wait. Now, there's another word that gets translated as hope, and that word is kava. And that word has this idea of tension. Like if you take a rope or you take this rubber band and you pull it really tight, now, what's going to happen if I let go of this rubber band? It'll slap me, or it'll shoot off if I hold it right. Um, so, kava, this hope that we see in the Old Testament, is also another word to wait. But it's specifically this idea of kind of waiting under tension, right? The rubber band, I can hold it here, but what it really wants is to come back together. And if I let go of it, It'll shoot off like that. I almost shot it at Pastor David, but I decided I'd like my job. So. Um, <laughs> uh, so in the Bible, we have this idea of waiting for hope, and we have this idea of hoping in Jesus. And that's really good news because when the things around us don't work, a lot of times people in the Bible recognize that sometimes life isn't going to be good. Sometimes bad things are going to happen, and sometimes really bad things are going to happen. But they put their hope in Jesus, and we can put our hope in Jesus right now that while we wait in this world, and we're kind of under the tension, and we see there's some good things, but there's a lot of bad things too, we can have a hope in Jesus that ultimately he's going to make everything good, right? And that is the hope that we talk about today when we light this candle for Advent. And when we hear the word hope in the Bible, 
That is the hope that we're talking about. It's not just that things are going to be good and life is going to work out, but it's a hope in a very real person, Jesus, who came and lived for us and died for us, and we're going to celebrate his birth with Christmas, but who is ultimately going to make all things good. That exciting? That's good, right? See all the bad things in the world go away? Cool. Would you all want to pray with me? God, we thank you for your hope. God, we thank you for your son. Um, And for the ability to know you. God, that we don't have to hope in the things around us. but that we can hope in your son and his gift of salvation. God, you are good, and we love you. In your name we pray, amen. All right, y'all can go back to your seats. Good morning. If you'll stand if you're able to honor the word of God. Our first reading today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verses 8 through 10. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. You are a lion's cub, Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down, like a lioness, who dares to rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nation shall be his. Our second reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 6. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where's the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chiefs, priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's message is Daddy's Favorite. I, this is a good service to do that. I like these big families here. <coughs> of course, though, you're not supposed to have any favorites, right, in a big family? At least in the case of Jacob's family, as you can see in Genesis 49, there was a favorite. And it wasn't the firstborn. Now, I hope you never forget that the Bible is a story from the Middle East. It's interesting, some of us who remember the 70s, and not all of us do, (laughs) even those that lived them. Um, Okay, (laughs) slight joke. (laughs) One of the charges against Christianity or why people chose other religions, they chose Eastern religions because they thought that was cooler but we, ha- we practice an Eastern religion. It's set in the Middle East. And you have to know that in the Middle East, family really, really matters, much more than America. But there are rules to families in the Middle East. And one of the rules is the oldest kid gets everything. You know, gets all the favor, gets the name, gets, has the power to do the things in dad's name. So if 
somehow that order is upset. It upsets the entire family. And that's why it is revolutionary that in Genesis 49, it's Judah, who's actually third born, gets everything. That doesn't seem fair, does it? I'm not going to ask who's first born. I watched that play out here. No, anyhow, I'll just speak for my own family. I'm number three in line. I have two older brothers. They don't like to get advice from me. They think they know more than I do. I do remind them that I actually, you know, I got higher in the military. No, I, the, anyhow, they don't like <laughs> their younger brother being all uppity. It's not fair. One of the things I, I hope that we know about God is God isn't fair. <gasps> you didn't say that. Here's how God isn't fair. He doesn't give us what we deserve. Amen. Come on, we're Methodists. We can go ahead and say amen. We, na- we may not be able to raise our hands, but we can say amen. And I'm okay with God not being fair. It's one of the reasons I decided for Jesus Christ, because I realized I didn't want fair. But the world seems to want fair, uh, certainly by the injury accident attorneys I hear on the radio. They keep trying to convince people to go to them because we're going to get you what's fair. And again, as Christians, I, th- I hope we reject that. And we say, no, 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 we're, we're, we're okay. We're willing to live with God not being fair and with him playing favorites. Now, if you wonder why all that war went on in Gaza, why we had, why Hamas did what they did, they have a problem with God cho- not choosing the firstborn son. If I- Islam is founded on the premise that God should always go with the firstborn son. The firstborn son of Abraham is Ishmael. And the Muslims will tell you they are the descendants of Ishmael. So by their thinking, part of the reason they say our God is invalid is because he doesn't choose the firstborn. He jumps over the firstborn and he chooses the second, starts with Isaac. and then. Jacob choose, jumps two and becomes Judah. From Judah, we get the word Jew. From Judea and Jew, and all of these are conjugations of things to do with Genesis 49. It says, Judah, the scepter will never depart from your hand. In other words, ruling power, the, the ability to rule the world comes through Judah. Judah. And most of the world doesn't want to hear that. And then it says, and that staff will never depart from between your feet. In the Middle East, that's, that's kind of, it said, I am immovable. I have the rod of authority and no one's moving me. And the world says, that isn't fair. And God says, I'm okay with that. I've got daddy's, or, you know, I'm daddy. I get to choose who's my favorite. And he has said it there. This is why in the Christmas story, and as we read Matthew 2, we hear that the, the Magi, that's a Persian word, a Farsi word, an Iranian word for priest. So even in that day, their religion has to come to Israel and find out where is this baby born king of the Jews? Where is daddy's favorite? King Herod, who thought he was, well, he was the king, but he's like, You mean there's a new king and it's not going to be from my family? Because he's like, well, I I looked at my my house. There didn't seem to be a a, a new baby born there. So he gets out the leaders of the faith and says, where is this? Where's the Bible say daddy's favorite is going to be born? And they consult the book of Micah. Then in Bethlehem, in this little town, not in Jerusalem, but, you know, kind of in the Uvalde of Israel in its day. It says, that's where you've got to look. You've got to look in a house or in a land, in a county associated with Judah. Not just because of Micah, but because of Genesis 49. Our God plays favorites. 
Herod didn't like God playing favorites. He wanted his family to be forever on the throne. He was the Hamas in his day. As we know, he goes and he kills babies like Hamas because he rejected any idea of God being able to play favorites. He was going to control things. Now, it wouldn't be good news for us because most of us don't have Judah on our birth certificates, right? We don't have it anywhere in the family tree if God says, ah, I have said that Judah has this favor. I have said that the ruler of all the world comes from this one family line. But he says, you can be part of the family. All you need to accept is that I am God. I do play favorites. I've named my favorites. And as we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate that the fulfillment of Genesis 49 was born in the town of Bethlehem. And by believing in him, we are now members of the family. I'm so grateful God isn't fair and lets me, who never did anything worthy of it, now get all the promises of Genesis 49 and every other prophecy for Jesus fulfilled because our God plays favorites and we now can be also daddy's favorite. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, that we don't get what we deserve, that we get everything that was Christ's. As he said, you shall do even greater things than these in my name. Lord, let us be about that work of Daddy's favorite in the days in which we live. We ask this in the name of Daddy's favorite, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who truly love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, who dwell in charity with their neighbors, and intended to live a holy life. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, making your humble confession to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we confess and lament that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. Because the remembrance of our sin is more than we can bear, have mercy on us and forgive us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, pardon us of all that is past and grant that we may ever serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You do not have to be a member of this church to partake of this meal, this sacrament. You just have to be, uh, to, be w or to receive Jesus in the bread and in the cup and know that that is what you are receiving, who you are receiving. With that, let's continue our service. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and our joy to give thanks to you in all places and at all times, Almighty Father. You are the source of all truth, life, and love. You made us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When in our sinfulness we turned away from you and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity made covenant to be our sovereign God, and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, 
we praise you with the angels and the archangels and all the company of heaven, forever singing this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and glory is yours, O God our Father. For in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to the world. Your Spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn, and to proclaim freedom for captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the year of the Lord's favor. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith as we say, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, receiving these gifts of bread and of the cup with thanksgiving for the death and the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit and be for us that they may would be for us the body and blood of Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive these holy sacraments and partake of his most blessed body and blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one as your church, that Christ may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and gather us together with all your saints in the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. We ask this through your Son, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And with the confidence of children, let us now pray the Lord's Prayer as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup we take is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for me and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And in preparation to receive these sacraments, let us pray the prayer of humble access as we pray. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Please be seated. Will those helping with communion come down at this time? Let us close our time at the Lord's table with a thanksgiving prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please let's stand if you are able to sing in hymn 249, there is a song in the air. Please be seated.
And hear now the benediction. Our God is not fair. He's better than fair. He opens his arms to all who will open their arms to Jesus. No merit required. Let us go forward in that good, good news. He came as a baby to redeem us and to make us his sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord. Let us be grateful in this season. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.